Soil moisture sensors are essential for successful working with plants. In video number 207, I showed some of the most common sensors. Some of them were bad and some were okay. In the meantime, I discovered a new sensor type that promises accuracy and more data. These sensors are also waterproof and can be buried. So let's check them out. We will also learn about the RS485 and Modbus interface and how to connect such sensors to MQTT and Home Assistant. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the first row. If you search YouTube, you will find many videos about the cheap PCB sensors, but hardly any videos about this new kind of sensor. This is why we will look at the different sensors you get and the parameters they measure. Look at the different transmission standards the sensors offer. Look at how the RS485 and the Modbus standard work and how it can be read by an Arduino sketch that transmits it via MQTT. We will also cover two different RS485 interface boards and show which one to choose. Look at how the same sensor could be built with ESP Home. Do some testing with the sensors to get an idea of their quality. On AliExpress you find several such sensors. None of them has a proper brand on the sensor itself. They seem to be the same and the vendors only use differently colored stickers. They are also not well documented. Only one vendor, Convintop, provides data sheets and even test and setup programs for Windows. We will later see other indications that they are all the same. Because each vendor sells many sensors, we have to bring an order into the offerings. You get sensors that deliver analog voltages, a 4 to 20 mA loop or an RS485 interface. And you get simple sensors that only measure temperature and moisture, up to quite elaborate ones that add conductivity, pH and NPK. NPK is the abbreviation for nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. The three main components of fertilizers. You might ask why it is called NPK and not NPP. The chemical symbol for potassium is K, like kalium. NPK seems to be the de facto standard for all kinds of fertilizers. Current loops are used for sensors if you want to bridge long distances. Why would you use current and not voltage? Long cables can cause a voltage drop along the wires, which induces errors. Current on the other hand is always the same along the wires. If we introduce a resistor close to the ADC, we do not have any voltage loss. Cool idea. But not for me, because I do not want to use one of the not so good ADCs of the ESP32. High currents of 4 to 20 mA are used to create some immunity against external influences, by the way. Whether you use an analog interface or RS485 depends on what your measuring instrument accepts, the number of values your sensor offers and the number of sensors you want to connect in parallel. The expected results should be the same. You can connect up to 32 devices on one RS485 connection. This is why such sensors have an address. I only bought RS485 sensors. This standard is also made for long wires in harsh environments. It uses a differential signal that is not referenced to ground. Twisted pair cables are usually used to reduce the influence of external fields. Common differential voltages are plus minus 1.5 to plus minus 5 volt. And the protocol is the same as for RS-232. RS-485 is often used with the Modbus RTU standard. Data is held in registers, sometimes called coils, for discrete outputs. These registers can be read and written by the master device. The slave device is passive and waits till the master pulls it. Because of the only two wires, it uses a half-duplex communication. 
Our sensors start to work at 4.5 volts, so I use 5 volt, and we will get about plus minus 2 volts on the data cables. This is a problem if we want to use an ESP32 with its 3.3 volt pins. How can we solve this issue? The easiest way is to buy an RS485 to TTL converter module. Most of them use a MAX485 chip to do the interface. Because the sensors use half duplex, the MAX485 has to switch directions between transmission and reception a fact we must consider in the future. And because the MAX485 also runs at 5V, I use a level converter module to adapt the 5V signals to the 3.3V signals requested and provided by the ESP32. Unfortunately, I only have RS485 to USB modules. Perfect to connect sensors to a PC or Raspberry Pi but less than ideal for the task at hand. As a maker, we always find a way. These boards have jumpers to disconnect the signals between the FTDI chip and the MAX485. Like that, it is easy to connect ground, 5V, RX and TX directly to the MAX485. Unfortunately, the problem was not entirely solved because the sensors did not work. No signals were produced at the interface wires. Further investigations revealed that the FTDI chip produces a signal to switch the direction of the MAX485 to transmit. This signal has no jumper and therefore is lacking if we do not use USB. Fortunately, this signal can be inserted by soldering a wire to pins 2 and 3. These two pins are anyway connected. Now we are ready to rumble. I thought I used ESP Home to connect the sensors to Home Assistant. However, the developers were brighter than me and chose a proper RS485 to TTL board for that purpose. As the FTDI chip, that board also creates a switching signal and their YAML definition does not include the signal needed for my hacked board. So, if you want to use your sensors with ESP Home, you have to buy the proper adapter board. You will later see that I was happy with my USB board because it solved another problem. Because of this situation, I decided to use the Arduino IDE to connect the sensors and use MQTT, including Auto Discovery, to integrate it into Home Assistant. With MQTT, you can also incorporate it in other platforms. Frequent viewers know that I stopped to program myself. So I asked ChatGPT to write the code for my temperature and moisture sensor. This time I went a step further. I asked it to write a code for one of my sensors and included a simple link to the sensor's datasheet. This little wonder saw that it has to use the Modbus library, adjusted the addresses, the registers as well as the names and the multiplication factors. I got proper results on the first run. Incredible if you ask me. Adding the ESP Home interface with Auto Discovery created a few discussions. But because of my video number 495, I knew that it is easiest done using the Arduino JSON library. This is what I told ChatGPT. The following sensor provides seven parameters. This is why I gave ChatGPT the task of extending the first sketch and writing a second one, including all seven parameters. Of course, I attached its datasheet, and really, I got a second sketch for the more complex sensor. I now have two ESPs connected to two sensors. Because I was unsure if the same source manufactured all the sensors, I purchased the second one for temperature and moisture. After connecting it, I discovered that it uses exactly the same registers. A strong indication that it is the same sensor, just with a differently colored sticker. But at least we now have three of the new sensors to compare. I added this Mi Flora BLE sensor to the comparison. It uses the capacitive method. After this discovery, I asked ChatGPT to add the purple sensor with address 2. Like that, I could attach both sensors in parallel to the interface. 
After all my measurements were done, I changed the address of the NPK sensor to 3 and asked ChatGPT again to integrate this different sensor into one sketch. You can find the resulting sketch on my GitHub. By the way, I also tried DeepSeek with similar results. This incredible speed up of programming created a lot of joy on my side. I could concentrate on describing the problem, not programming the nitty gritty. By the way, I changed the sensor's address using the PC software provided by one of the suppliers. And here I was happy I had an RS-485 to USB converter. I will include all manuals and software on my GitHub that you do not need to search for them. Unfortunately, I found no information about whether the new sensors use time domain reflectometry. Because of their low price, I assume they are capacitive sensors. Maybe you know more? Let's start the test. I purchased standard Swiss soil with some data marked on the package. So we have an indication if our instruments measure correctly. Of course, this is a natural product and I assume there are variations in these values. This soil should have a pH of 7.4, which is a bit above neutral. In the same table, we find the NPK values from before. Unfortunately, they are in milligram per liter. Our sensor should measure milligram per kilogram. Dry soil is relatively light, so its weight varies with the water content but it will always be below one kilogram per liter. This is the conversion formula. Because our material is lighter than water, the measured values should be smaller than those written on the package. For comparison, I purchased this package for plants that love acid soil. This is why it has a pH of 5.8. So our sensor should show a clear difference between the two soils. Otherwise, it would be useless. To start the tests, I dried some of the soil in our oven in the kitchen for a few hours. Of course, when my wife was out. This pot now contains extremely dry soil. You see, our setup neatly displays all values in Home Assistant. Cool! Here are the results for moisture. The two blue sensors showed 4 and 4.8%. However, the fluctuation of the values was around 1%. The Mi Flora was also quite close. The purple sensor showed 0%. No pH or NPK values were measured. So let's check the other extreme, a glass of water. Fortunately, we can submerge all new sensors because they are waterproof. After a while, all sensors except the Mi Flora showed the expected 100%. Next, I weighted a pot of dry soil. It is 1.2 kilograms. To reach 25% humidity, I mix 3 deciliters of water with the soil. As before, I press the soil by hand to compact it. This mix is already quite wet. Not being a gardener, I assume plants would quickly grow in such soil. Now NPK as well as conductivity start to show values. Because I'm no chemist, I have to ask ChatGPT. It shows these relations. So my soil should have 85 mg of phosphorus and 705 mg of potassium per liter. Nitrogen is contained in its elemental form. As said before, my soil is lighter than water. So nitrogen should show around 100 mg, phosphorus about 70 and potassium about 600 mg. The measured values are disappointingly low. It seems the manufacturer knows about this and therefore prints a warning that the NPK values are just indicative. However, we have already learned that these values change with moisture levels. If we go on with moisture, we see that the two blue sensors are right at the point. The purple one is a bit high and the Mi Flora is a bit low. The Mi Flora also shows a fertility value of 294. I assume this contains something like the NPK value. To check if the sensors are influenced by temperature, I used original soil which was stored outside. Its temperature is 6 degrees. The moisture values seem okay 
and the three sensors show similar values. However, the NPK values are not measured at all and the pH is too low. This fact does not change with temperature increase. It seems that below around 25% moisture, the NPK sensors do not work. The MiFlora shows a too low moisture and the fertility value also dropped significantly. Looking at the temperature, we see that the MiFlora measures room temperature, not soil temperature. Next, I add water to increase moisture to 50%. The measured moisture values are okay for the three new sensors. The MiFlora is too low. I have to admit that it is not easy to get a completely even mix of the soil. The values are pretty stable over time, but depend on where you place your sensors. The soil I use is a mix of different materials and includes some small stones. The NPK values are now higher, so we can confirm that they change with the moisture level. Let's prove that fact by pouring even more water into the soil. Now the soil is completely soaked. The two simple sensors show nearly 100% moisture. The NPK sensor shows 94 and the MiFlora 90%. For the first time we see a value for nitrogen and the NPK values again increased a lot. Now it's clear that the moisture level has a massive influence on these values. The pH is still too low and probably has to be adjusted in software. As said before, I have bought a second type of soil that should have a much lower pH. Let's check it out with a moisture level of around 60%. The pH is definitely lower than before and the NPK values are higher than with the other soil. So the pH measurement is at least usable. What did we learn? RS-485 sensors can be connected to our typical development boards using a converter with a MAX-485 chip. Because it is 5 volt, we have to use a level converter for 3.3 volt devices. These sensors use the Modbus RTU protocol, which allows the connection of up to 32 devices in parallel. RS-485 cables can bridge more than one kilometer. Because such cables could be expensive, we used Wi-Fi for the connection. With ChatGPT's help, the sketches were quickly written. It even included auto discovery for Home Assistant. These new sensors measure moisture and soil temperature pretty accurately. The pH and the MPK values are more indications. They vary a lot with moisture level and are not measured below 25% moisture. However, the pH for the acid soil was lower than the one for alkaline soil. The values take a few minutes to stabilize. After that, they are pretty stable over time. The MiFlora sensor followed the measurements of the other sensors. However, its moisture levels were too low. Still, it is a good choice for our pot plants because it delivers a good signal for watering and also the fertility value can indicate that you need to add fertilizer. The price of around $20 for the simple and $40 for the NPK sensors is a reasonable price for the accuracy. And because they are waterproof and have stainless steel probes, they can be buried into the ground to measure where it matters most. The rods are fragile, so pay attention with stones. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.